Hello and welcome to this session in which we will keep working with the estimated tax payment for C Corporation in a form of a tax strategy. Now in the prior session, we learned how to compute the annual required payment for a corporation when it comes to paying their taxes because corporation, not like employees, corporation, they have to pay their taxes. They have to do that. Employee, if you're an employee, the company will do what? Will withhold your withhold the taxes and you pay as you go. So you don't have to worry about sending the money. The company will take the money from your paycheck. Well, the company itself will have to pay the tax. Now, how would the company pay the tax? This is what we learned in the prior session. When do they have to pay the tax and how much? And in the prior session, we looked at two methods that are acceptable under certain circumstances. One is the currency, current year's tax liability. Simply put, the company will choose to pay 100% of their estimated tax liability for this year. Now, this method assumes what? This method assumes that you can estimate the total tax for the current year, thus taking the total tax, breaking it down quarterly, and making payments. For corporation with steady income, this is a great way. Because if you have steady income, you can make good estimate. And based on the estimate, you can have a good tax liability figure, pay the liability, and you are done. So this method is good if you can estimate your taxable income. And your taxable income is pretty steady. The other method is paying 100% of the prior year tax liability. This is to avoid penalties. This option allows the corporation to base its quarterly payment on the 100% of the tax liability reported in the prior year. However, there are restrictions to, to this method. This method can only be used if you are not a large corporation. Large corporation means if you have 1 million or more in taxable income in the prior three years, in any of the prior three years, you cannot use this method. Now, this method is still, still allowed for only the first quarter. For the first quarter, you can do that. Also, it cannot be used if you have an NOL in the prior year. If you have an NOL in the prior year, you would say, well, I don't have a tax liability. I don't have to make any tax payment. Incorrect. When you have NOL, you cannot use the prior year tax liability. You could either try to estimate your current tax liability or use the annualized income method. And this is what we will discuss in this session. So this is the new topic that we will discuss, the third method of making this required annual payment, the annualized income method. And I wanted to keep this separately because I believe it. you need more, more explanation about it. And that's why I kept it separate from the other two sessions. So let's go ahead and get started on, on understanding what is annualized income method. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The annualized income method, basically the corporation based their first quarter estimate. Remember the first quarter estimate on the tax liability of the prior year. So that's always allowed. If you remember what we talked about here, prior tax liability, even if you are more than a million dollar company for the first quarter, you are allowed to do what? Base it 25% on the prior year. So the for, for the first quarter, you are good to go. Now, in situation where the income varies significantly from one quarter to another, so your income goes like this, then like this, then like that, so it, your income fluctuate, the annualized income method is used to determine the estimated tax payment for the subsequent quarters. Why? Because your income could go up, your income could go down. You don't want to pay more in estimates or less in estimate for that particular quarter. So what you do is you would use this annualized income method. So this income involves projecting estimating the tax liability as your income earned in a given quarter. And the assumption is this earning would continue at the same rate for the entire year. So you'll pay your taxes based on the quarterly income. And you're going to see how in a moment. So this projection is then used to calculate the estimated tax payment for each quarter. Don't worry, we're going to work an example. 
Now, the first quarter is not influenced by this method. As I told you, it could be influenced by this method. You could use it for the first quarter, but usually it's not because the company would use 25% of the prior year tax liability. That's allowed. But you could also, I'm going to show you, it can be used as well. So the payment for the following quarters, it means the second, third, fourth, are adjusted based on the actual income of the preceding quarter. Hold on a second. So here's what's going to happen. In the second quarter, we're going to look at income from the first quarter. We're going to look at this income. And based on that, we're going to annualize it. And this is for the second quarter. For the third quarter, we're going to look at income up to the second quarter, annualize it, and pay our taxes. Don't worry if it doesn't make any sense. An example will clarify this. And this allows the corporation to make more accurate tax payment in line with their actual earnings rather than guessing, helping them manage their financial resources more effectively and avoid the most important thing, underpayment of penalties. Because if you're following this method, you would avoid underpayment of penalties. Just to review, we looked this on we looked at this in the prior session. The first installment payment is due April 15th. So notice the first installment payment is due after the quarter has ended, after the first quarter has ended, because the first quarter ends, assume in a calendar year, ends when? Ends the end of March. So you have 15 days to determine your income. However, the second quarter, second installment, it's due June 15th. This is due before 15 days before the quarter ends. It's due 15 days before the quarter ends. So what are you going to do when you use the annualized method? You're going to look at income from the first quarter because your second quarter did not finish yet. You have to make the payment. So you're going to look at your income in the, in, in the first quarter, then annualize it. How, how, how are we going to annualize it? Don't worry, I'm going to show you in a moment. Then at this point, you are responsible for paying another 25% and in total 50%. In the third quarter, you have to submit your payment by September 15th. Also, 15 days before the third quarter ends, assuming we are using a calendar year. Well, if that's the case, what you're going to do, you're going you're gonna to look at your income in the first and second quarter, basically the preceding, basically the cumulative, and you're going to say, this is how, how much I earned as of the end of the second quarter, then double it, and that will be your third 25% and in total 75%. The same concept would apply for the fourth quarter. And this is the formula that we will use. For the first quarter, which is January, February, and March, I'm going to be using calendar year because it's easy to understand. So we're looking at January, February, and March. What you do, you will take your income from that period, multiply it by the annualized factor, 12 divided by 3, which we have four factors, to figure out your annual income. Then you would compute your annual income by 25 by you know the tax rate and you will pay 25 percent notice in the second quarter now we, now remember the first quarter we can do this or we can pay 25 percent of the prior year and we're going to look at both options so the first quarter basically you could use the annualized method or you could use the 25 percent in the second quarter hold on a second you look at january February and March, just like what you did here, January, February, and March. Why can you do that for the first quarter? Because your payment is due April 15th. So you can look at those because you already know what you did in January, February, and March. Now, in the second quarter, your payment is due June 15th. Your second quarter did not end. So what do you have? For sure, you have the first quarter numbers. You will take the first quarter numbers and you multiply it by four. And now you would say, based on that, based on my total income for the year, um, I have to pay 25%, which is in total 50%. So whatever you paid in the first quarter, you subtract for the second quarter. Don't worry, we would look at an example with numbers. So to estimate the taxable income, corporation multiplied their earning in a given period by the annualized factor. And here is the factor. Here, here are the factor. Four, two. By the time you get to the third quarter, you are looking at half a year. At half a year data, you multiply it by two. By the, by the time you got to the third quarter, you would look at 0.75 or 1.33 of the year. This process projects what the income would be if it continued at the same rate for the entire year. After calculating the estimated annual income, determine, you determine the tax liability. And that's just to make sure you met the necessary percentage of the obligation. For example, if a corporation earned a certain amount in the first quarter, it multiplied by the annualized factor, which happens to be 4. Why 4? Because 
if, the, if you're going to do this for the next three quarters, there's four quarters. This gives an estimate about the annual income. And this will be the first quarter earning. Well, and we'll, pay ta we'll make the payment based on that. The corporation then calculate the tax due on this estimated annual income and ensure that by, by the payment deadline it has paid how much? 25% after the first quarter, 50% after the second, so on and so forth. And this approach allow corporation to adjust their tax payment according to their actual income, not making any estimate, helping them manage cash so they don't have to overpay or underpay. What did you do in the quarter? Ignoring the first quarter because you can use it, you don't have to use it, then you pay your taxes. The best way to illustrate this is to look at an example. No if and buts about it. Last year, Delta, a C Corp, had, had a taxable income of $8 million and paid tax liability of one million six hundred and eighty which is 21%. Now, why are we giving this number? Why are we giving the tax liability from the prior year? Because in the first quarter, you can take this liability multiplied by 25% and you are safe because it, it does work. It's allowed. This year, Delta earned more and wants to minimize the estimated tax payment to maximize working capital. So they want to figure out what's the best way to, uh, what's the amount we should pay for the each quarter. And here's their income for the first quarter, second, third, and fourth. So the first quarter, they earned $4 million. What will they do for the first quarter? Okay, for the first quarter, they earned $4 million. And they know that for sure, because they're going to have to make the payment for the first quarter, April 15. So one way to do it, one way to do it, remember, is to do what? You can take 100% of the prior tax and multiply it by 25%. So one way to pay, to satisfy the first quarter is take your tax liability from the prior year, which is 1,680,000 multiplied by 25%. And voila, you have to pay 420,000 for the first quarter. Or, or you would use the annualized method. What's the annualized method? In the first quarter, we earned 4,000,000. Well, if, we're, if we keep going at the same rate, 4 million times 12 divided by 3, which is 4 quarter, our annual income is 16 million times 21%. Our annual tax bill will be 3,360. Multiply this by 25%, you'll have 840,000. Now, if you want to use the annualized method for the first quarter, you have to sign a check for 840,000. What do you think the company would choose? Write a check for 420 or 840? I'm pretty sure they will choose 420. Especially, it's allowed. You are allowed to pay for the first quarter 25% of your what? Of your prior year income. So the, for the first quarter, we paid 420 and we are good to go. Now, we don't know at this point, we don't know the second, third, and fourth. So just kind of cross these out. Let's take a look at the second quarter. In the second quarter, we're going to switch to the annualized method. The calculation for the second quarter is based on the first quarter. Because remember, the payment is due June 15th. Remember, I kept emphasizing the payment. So the payment is due before the end of the quarter. Well, we don't know what the quarter looks like because we still have at least 15 days to go. So what do we do? We look at the first quarter income. And at this point, we should know by June 15th, we should know our first quarter. Our first quarter income is <clears throat> 4 million. So we're going to take 4 million and annualize it. Annualize it means multiply it by, you know, if, if that quarter times four is 16 million, then we're going to take the 16 million times 21%. Our tax bill would be 3,360, assuming we kept earning 4 million per quarter. Well, at this point, we are responsible at this point of, of the life of the year of the company. We're responsible for paying 50% of the tax. 50% of that is 1,680,000. What we're saying is by the second quarter, we have earned 8 million. <clears throat> 4 million in the first quarter, we're assuming 4 million in the second, 4 million in the third, 4 million in the fourth, but we're only responsible for paying the first two quarters. Now, do we have to pay 1,680? And the answer in total, yes, but remember, we already paid 420,000 in the first quarter. It means we have to write a check for 1,260 for this quarter, which is quarter two. So the check will be for 1 million. 260 and this way we satisfied our obligation our payment let's take a look at the third quarter at the third quarter we're looking at the third quarter and we have to make the payment by september 15th great but the quarter hasn't ended 
So what do we have to do? Well, since the quarter hasn't hasn't ended, we know for sure we earn four million in quarter one, two million in quarter two. Now at this point we don't know this. So in other words, we have earned six million, six million as of the middle of the year. Well, we're gonna take the six million multiplied by two or 12 divided by six, the factor is two, because if we earn six million here, we're gonna assume we're gonna earn another six million here, annualizing the income. Well, that's 12 million. 12 million for the year, that's gonna give us a tax bill based on 21%, 2,520,000. Well, at this point, during the third quarter, we have to pay 75% of this amount. Why? Because each, each quarter is 25, 25, and 25. At this point, we're responsible to have paid 75% in total. Well, what's 75% of 2,520? It's 1,890. Do we have to pay this much? Not this much, because we already paid 1,680 for the first and the second quarter. Now, how much do we have to pay then? This amount, 1,890, minus what we paid in the prior two quarters, which is 1,680,000, we write a check for 210,000, 210,000. Now, let's take a look at the fourth quarter. Well, the fourth quarter is due when? The fourth quarter is due December the 15th. So at this point, we don't know what's, what amount do we, do, do we earn. So what do we have to look at? We have to look at the 4 million from the first quarter, the 2 million in the second quarter, the 5 million in the third quarter. Those numbers are good now. They are for sure accurate. What do we do? We take those numbers and we annualize it. What's annualize it? Well, what's left in the year? 12 9. It's 1.33. So if you take 4 million plus 2 million plus 5 million based on the first, second, and third multiplied by 12 9, your annual income, again, this is estimate roughing because notice here it's 0.333 rounding. So it's 13,333. Well, if that's your annualized income based on the first three quarter, your tax bill should be 2.8 million. Well, of the 2.8 million, at this point, you have to pay the whole thing. Well, do you have to pay 2.8 million? Yes, in total, but you already paid 1,890,000 through the first, second, and third quarter. So the total is 2.8 based on the annualized income. Then you have to do what? Account for what you paid previously. So what's left is, so on the fourth Q, you pay 910,000. And by doing so, you comply with the annualized income method. I hope this example helped clarify how to do this. Remember the first quarter, the first quarter, usually the company, you can annualize the first quarter or you can take do what? Take 25% of prior tax liability. When do you take 25%? When it's cheaper. If, if annualizing is cheaper, you annualize. You annualize. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from farhatlectures.com. What is the primary reason corporation make estimated tax payment throughout the year? Why? Why do they make those payments? To maximize their tax deduction? to comply with pay-as-you-go tax laws and avoid underpayment of penalties, to delay tax payment until the end of the year, to invest in tax-exempt securities. Well, if you're making a payment, you're not investing in, any, in anything. To minimize your tax deduction? No, you cannot deduct federal taxes on your income tax return. To delay tax payment? Not at all. You're not delaying. You are making the payment. You're not delaying anything. Is it to comply with pay-as-you-go? Yes, because as an employee, as an employee, you have your taxes deducted from your paycheck. Corporations don't have a company that hire them. They are the company themselves. They are responsible for paying their taxes, pay as you go, to do what? To avoid underpayment penalties and interest. So the answer is B. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, resources that's going to help you, whether you're studying for your CPA exam or taking an accounting course, studying for the enrolled agent, or any other professional certification. Invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.